Hey people, Positive Paul. Here we are Friday, July 28th, 2023, of course. And I'll make this video my trailer for my upcoming Montauk Madness Week extravaganza where once again I go over the excruciating details that surround the Montauk Project and everything and everyone involved and also what I will do once and for all as I've been demonstrating now now in the beginning of its eighth year concerning these UFO UAPs that they on a daily basis even from yesterday seem to be hanging around me Paul Wilson Linder Jr. Now I'm going to give you some red meat right now. A lot of what I will present here in the upcoming two weeks, I will be repeating myself ad nauseum. My story doesn't change. I don't need to hand my information off to a third party that will sanitize it and essentially try to try to minimize the involvement of individuals that are actually to this day still affected by this meaning some type of illegal non-consensual experimentation against the subjects the human will causing a uh, life life altering uh, changes damages to the health, the well-being of the individual, and it speaks to the complete disregard for any, any sense of uh, moral obligation, meaning a Hippocratic oath to human rights and everything that is presented in a modern world and how we treat people. So without getting off track again, we know who this is. This is Al Bielik and he this is around 1991 and this is the one one photo that I have of of many of Al, but this one really speaks to the fact about whether this guy is who he say he is. Now remember he started out as Edward Cameron. You've got to understand this story, and we'll go over it. Don't you worry. But I want, I want you to see this screen capture once again from this interview around 1991, right before the Tzersky interviews. Now, look at Al's hand, okay? You can see how clearly it's discolored, but actually... The way, if you were able to hold my iPad and really get a good look at this, his hand demonstrates the attributes, the colors of the electromagnetic spectrum. And this is the best I could do, but you can clearly see that. So one of the things we're going to get into is, well... Uh, time travel will, will be part of the subject, but who can actually do this to be able to transfer transit dimensions and be exposed to electromagnetic radiation and still survive it? That's, that's one, one issue amongst many concerning time travel. But when you see this, is this an effect of holographic technology failing? Is this an effect of just technology inside the individual? So we want to get into that. So I'm going to let that be, but there's your little teaser for Al. And we also want to know about the Draco. Now, this is one of my many hundreds and hundreds of pictures of orbs. But in this particular one, up in my little hovel, you can see the Draco hanging out in the tree. 
Now, what you notice is, if you really look close, you got the two eyes, you have the snout, and you have the hood. And I think the way some, some individuals have explained this, there is a hierarchy within the Draco, and this, this may be a high-ranking Draco demon assigned to my case, right? Uh, I, you, look, you, you understand this, that Satan, he runs his operation, a uh, pretty, pretty tight operation, all right, Dis discipline. And for some individuals, you would think that these super soldiers, if they took a picture with their camera or something, or someone took a picture of them, you you would see these orbs and be able to pick out, you know, the Draco, the Grey, all that. So, we know concerning the rituals involved in Montauk, all that, we're going to get into that. But take a good look at your buddy, the Draco. This, this, he'll be knocking on your back doors soon in America to uh, dispose of you Benedict Arnolds that are of no consequence. You're just waiting, waiting to die, I guess. Your bug's on a windshield on a warm summer night. So there's another little tantalizing tidbit. And these alien insectoids. We know all about them at this point because I've been harping about this for years now. And we want to know what their involvement is concerning Montauk. And we want to know why they're hanging around me. And we want to know why virtually no one else in the world can document this properly, except my buddy Jude. He's getting pretty good at this. And uh, once again, thank you for my supporters out there. And the ones that are still in disbelief or, you know, this is entertainment, pay attention because your future is on the line. So these alien insectoids, where we see really they're these geometric patterns that seem to give the inference that it's certainly interdimensional, and they're always hand in hand with the American Nazi Edomite Satanist you know who perp plane so there we go we'll discuss that and of course we will spend a lot of time on Preston don't really need to worry about Duncan remember he doesn't say much all milly mouthed and uh, what's interesting though is how these guys all got together now, one of the big things here, and I've explained this already, surrounding the infamous August 12th, 1983 date concerning the termination of said Montauk project and the events that occurred on that day. Now, I will remind everybody as a lot of us know, the Montauk Project goes hand in hand with the Philadelphia Experiment. So what we need to tie down is these individuals involved, they seem to be at two places at once, folks. But what I've already destroyed, and look, there were crickets. They, they, they look, they, they know I got these goofball Satanists by the balls and all their little minions, meaning their social media frauds. Remember, Junior is nothing but a conifer tree up against the bunker. Now, I gave you my source material, and this is from the East Hampton Historical Society, which back in the mid-80s, 1984 to be exact, documented the dissemb dissembling and, uh, well, I guess just, you know, they suddenly packed up out there on Long Island in Montauk 
through all the equipment outside where there's pictures when you look at these photo galleries right by the the radar tower you can see piles of equipment uh during it was the, they peg it june 84 i've shown this already but again you've got the bunkers you've got their picture that these clowns used and try to say that that's junior that's junior that duncan conjured up in his little pea brain to try to shut down the project and one of the things that's always bugged me and nobody nobody see nobody can get to the salient points about what's wrong with this initially only four people are able to give life give birth give legs to the myth of Montauk and it would be well almost a decade before anybody else started opening their yaps about it I may be a Johnny come lately but there's a reason for that folks and I still don't understand why the East Hampton Historical Society puts the eye of Horus uh, uh, whatever watermark on there quite interesting so here's my red meat. This, we know, is the United States Air Force 773rd Radar Squadron located at Montauk Air Force Station. In a matter of fact, I dug this up. It was just like kismet. It was like, you know, digging in the sand in the ocean. And finding, uh, I don't know, pearls maybe. But this is a collection of photographs of the Montauk Air Force Station at Camp Hero. Taken in September of 1980 by Ed Kraske, a former civilian employee at the base. Ed worked as a boiler fireman, stationary engineer for 35 years. His wife, Josephine Kraske, donated the scans of the album containing, now wait folks, listen to this, containing 37 photographs. Remember the number 37. And remember, 773rd Radar Squadron, right? The Sage Radar Tower. So there's Ed, and you would really be, I would tell you, if you people would actually do your own research and not be a monkey see, monkey do, and report what the actual people who spent years trying to understand this present using their information, pretending that you've got something figured out. Now, see, what Ed did for us is he also proves that Junior is nothing but a conifer tree right up against the bunker. But moreover, Mr. Kraske, do you think he would have seen Al, Preston, Stewart, Duncan, and the other goofballs at some point over the course? Well, Stewart, right, he says he's there since 1970 until the end. Right? 70 to August 12th, 83. So, in the 1980s, a portion of the land was deeded to the state of New York with 30 acres designated to the town of East Hampton. This is when East Hampton Historical Society went out there with their video cameras, every the whole shebang, and a very interesting documentation. I... You know, it, it, look, you've got to understand that the way this is presented to us in the news and historically for people like Ed that were there, that the last thing that they're going to tell you about is this Montauk project. So I just, look, there were people out there, but to this day, no, no witnesses of anything of the Sage Radar Tower sparking, right? I mean, look, they were pulse, they were uh, pulse, pulsing these electromagnetic fields. 
I, I, some vary the amplitude. You would think everything surrounding that, that area, even the, the vegetation, would have some type of indication that, that, yeah, something happened here. You hear people that they talk about directed energy attacks. But the reality is, if you have an external directed energy attack in the microwave range, it's going to burn the shit out of you. Or if you just, you, you, you pulsate or w w whatever it is, uh, however you, you transmit this frequency, you know, you, it's like taking a magnifying glass and letting a beam of light go through it. And what happens? You spark a fire, right? So these are simple, simple things that really, I, it, it makes a person that tries to approach this rationally, logically, which really you cannot do. You have to think outside of the box, but you're going to be like, man, they were pulsating over a, a thousand Tesla, right? The, I mean, the power as described by Preston coming off this radar tower when they were trying to manifest the thoughts of the psychics in the Montauk chair. So we'll get into that. But very, very interesting here on the infamous August 12th, 1983 date and them closing shop and packing up. So this will really be the head scratcher. We know when all this was going on, who was president? There, Ronnie. Ronnie Reagan was, right? One of the most revered presidents, the Hollywood actor, playing his part. Don't forget about Star Wars. Don't forget about Gorbachev, don't forget about who took over after Reagan was gone. <laughs>